Hey everybody, welcome to episode 133. <clears throat> well, I'm back in town again for the second time. Um, <clears throat> while I was out uh, down in Rochester, um, I, I did a bunch of, I had to do some family stuff. Um, but anyways, uh, one thing I did do was I stopped by since <clears throat> my mother lives right around the block from Comics Corner, which is the uh, one of the comic shops that I used to go to as a kid. Um, specifically in 90 or 89, it was 90, uh, that store opened up. So it's been a, it's still there. Um, that was my question. The reason why I stopped there was I was going to go to a Chinese, I was look up, I looked up my phone and like, what, huh, I'm in the mood for Chinese tonight. I'll get my mom and I Chinese. So I, uh, I, uh, said, oh, hey, there's a Chinese place right around the block over at the, uh, at the account where the comics corner is on the corner of um, Auburn Road and uh, John R. And I said, uh, "Oh, hey, I wonder if Comics Corner is still there. I think it is, but I want to see. So maybe I'll stop in there." Um, so I did, and then I, I I drove over there uh, with the fancy rental car. <laughs> I drove over there, and uh, and sure enough, it was open, and it 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 was like I stepped into. Uh, Literally, it was like I stepped into the early '90s, um, and uh, the guy, the the sh there's like a few different guys that work there. Um, uh, the owner was uh, the the owner wasn't there. The owner he also has a shop in Fraser. I think he still has one there. But anyways, um, anyways, there's these there's these two normal characters that are usually in there. One's this older guy, kind of looks like. Uh, it's hard to describe him. He has glasses, and uh, unlike me, who shaved my beard, he has a big beard on him. Red-haired guy with glasses, uh, and then the other guy, uh, which I always call the mini George Lucas, because he just reminds me of a tiny George Lucas. <laughs> really sure. But the thing is, he used to be like really thin and, and this wormy little guy, and uh, he's old now. <laughs> and he's kind of puffed out, but he still looks the same. Still wears the same kind of like sweaters, sweatshirt. <laughs> Has the same, still looks like a mini George Lucas, um, but uh, he's a little more puffy now. Just puffier. I guess that's the easier way to describe. I mean, and no offense to the guy, but I mean, he just looks a, just a tad different. Um, the store is the exact same. I mean, it's all laid out the exact same way. And the new comics are up here. You know, he's got some. Some. I should have took a picture, but you know, I didn't want to creep the guy out. But anyways, uh, so I stopped in there. Not looking for anything specific. I just wanted to stop in there while I go over and order Chinese. And uh, I, I came across something that kind of perplexed me. I was like, what, 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 what is this? So I came across that. Um, and what that is, is a short comic book box. Now, you've seen these. I mean, these aren't really, these aren't really uh, you know, a big new thing. I, I've known of these. You know, they're short comic boxes that are, you know, pre-printed pre stuff on it, which is funny because, you know, from that store and other stores at that time, and especially in the late 80s, I used to primarily get short boxes. I never liked the long boxes because, you know, in the trailer, I didn't have a lot of room in my bedroom. So I got the short boxes because they also fit really good in milk crates, and you could make a stack of milk crates and put the short boxes in. Um, and you didn't have to pull them out very much to get to your comics. <clears throat> so, I used to always get the short box. When I got the all plain white ones, but I used to do this myself. I used to draw right on the, because it was white, <coughs> like white paper, white cardboard, and paper over cardboard, corrugated cardboard. But I would draw right on the comic itself with markers and paint and everything. And I would basically do the same thing. I would make my own box but now you know obviously it must have caught him here's the thing i used to take white chuck taylors or black chuck taylors and i used to bleach them white and i used to draw like ninja turtles or judge dread and stuff all over them you know stuff like that and people thought i was crazy back when i was in school and uh you know but i and some people oh, those are kind of cool and i used to do that now you can get $150 Chuck Taylors with the X-Men already printed right on it. Um, again, I did this myself back in the day. Now you can spend 
maybe a couple more dollars in a regular uh, short box, and it's already done. If only I knew, you know, of all the things I could have made money at that seemed to be catching on, which, you know, like I said, none of it's brilliant ideas. It's just that the, specifically those things that I used to do are now you can get all that stuff. But anyways, so I bought this. Um, and the reason why is because, obviously, I, I wanted something to put comics in that's cool looking. And, I, I, and look, again, I started collecting comics, specifically Marvel comics, and quite... That's basically the start of my actual collecting, collecting. Look where I would buy boxes like this, or the white ones, and I would put the in comic book bags and boards. Because before that was just like I had a bunch of comics, like in a shoebox, no bags on them, just kind of, you know, shoved into a, on a shelf or under the bed or whatever, and I'd pull them out and I'd look through my comics, you know, and try to read them. Um, but until like 1984, when Secret Wars came out, that was the thing that got me into comics. And specifically buying a box, buying bags. I don't think boards were a thing back then yet. I don't think boards caught on to like the late 80s. I know they probably existed. But I'm just saying for me and my friends and stuff, bags were enough. We didn't need these fancy comic book boards. Um, and... Uh, you know, and we'd put them all in these boxes and stuff, and we'd, you know, we'd collect them. And then we'd get the comics buyer's guide. You know, we would look up and see, oh, how much is that? I want to, I want to, you know, I want a Conan number one, or I want to, whatever, fill in the blank, you know, back title. And then, of course, I got the uh, the Wolverine miniseries that, that year. So, hold on to that thought. <laughs> so this comes out. And I asked the guy, I said, hey, I said, uh, that's pretty cool Secret Wars box. What do you want for that? And he says, oh, they're $9.99 a piece. I said, I'll take one. And I, he says, that's for the uh, the upcoming uh, Secret Wars, because Secret Wars' 40-year 40, 40 anniversary is this year, 2024. It's been 40 freaking years. Um, and like I said, I bought all of Secret Wars right off, the sh right off the shelf. Not the spinner racks, because I bought them off Rochester Book Center. didn't have spinner racks. They had actual shelves. Fireside had spinner racks, but I got most of these off of um, at the at the Rochester Book Center, so right off their shelf. Essentially, a spinner rack. Um, and uh, so, anyways, I was like, "What? What do you mean?" And he says, "Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna reprint it." And I go, "Oh, like a like an you know, I've seen omnibuses, I've seen you know trade paperbacks." He's like, "No, they're doing facsimile editions." And I said, "What are these facsimile? I've heard of them before, but I don't know much about them." And he said. Oh, facsimiles, they're just, they're literally that. They're facsimiles, almost one-to-one re, -one recreations of original comic books, including the the ads, everything. But they're done on better paper. with you know, And they basically are using the, uh, the same pages that they put in the omnibuses and stuff, but they're printing them in comic book form. And I went, really? He says, yeah, they're going to come out with the whole Secret Wars series. I'm like, really? He says, yeah, he goes, they start next, it's ne the next Wednesdays and the number one comes out. I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I've got to have these. And it's like, well, I'm, you know, obviously 12 issues isn't going to fill up this whole box. He's like, oh no, there's a, go look over there. There's a whole rack of them. I'm like, oh, what? And I walk over to the rack and sure as shit, what's inside? And I don't, I'd only grabbed a few because that's all. I didn't get all of the ones he had, but I got all the ones I wanted. But look at these. Look at these. I don't know if I said this on any of my videos, but I definitely said this to people I know. And I, I was printing them out myself, making little mini comics. And I don't know if I put those on camera either. I was making my own little mini comics. But um, I'm like, because I get, you know, I was just using the CBRs and printing out the CBRs and making basically like pamphlet size, but like minier versions of them. I'm like, you know, I thought to myself, this is going to take forever to print all these comics that I want. I wish they would just come out with a, you know, a copy. And I don't have the ad, original ads or anything from the comic. I wish they'd just come out. It would be nice if they just reprinted all their old stock. I'm not saying they're new to them all, but I'm not a huge Daredevil fan either, but I did grab Daredevil um, just because it was there. And they're about three ninety nine, same price as a regular comic book that's out right now. Three nine, three ninety nine, four ninety nine, right around there. Depends on the comic, but 
the ad. Look at that. The uh, whatever they call prize and cash or whatever they have those like stupid you know business reply label uh, whatever these things were these things really get you to sell a bunch of junk and then they would if you had sold enough junk you could uh, you could get uh, these little things like a tape recorder or a, or a calculator watch you know or uh, the SD's model rocket you know a jam box uh, some of them had like I can't remember all of them you know, electronic games, a microscope, all the stuff that, you know, a, a young boy would want, right? But look at that. So it's printed on magazine stock, right? And inside, um, look at that. It's all printed on magazine stock, and the files are taken. And it even has the, the same indicia. Well, it's not the same. It's got, you know, it's updated, but the, it has the indicia where it's supposed to be, which, you know, even if you look in, like, the collected works and stuff, they don't have the indicia, and they don't have the ads. I'm not saying, that, you know, the ads are the greatest thing in the world, but the thing is, you want to talk about nostalgia. I, you know, I didn't love the ads then, but I tolerated the ads, just like everybody tolerated commercials. And I would, you know, and some ads I did like, and some ads did actually do their job. They got me to buy things, you know. And, uh, but looking back on them now, just like looking back on commercials from, you know, the 80s and stuff, from the 70s and whatnot, I'm very nostalgic for that stuff, and, you know, and it's all in there, you know. They even got all these comic book shops that may or may not even still exist. I mean, this is literally, they reprinted, and there's the whole Mile, there's the Mile High comics section. Obviously, this is not, uh, not correct, <laughs> which is weird because... You know, it was weird that they printed them like that. Because, I mean, somebody who bought this would be like, who didn't know, be like, hey, oh, my old high comics, I want to order Daredevil number one, Daredevil number one for uh, $225. Yeah, it's not how much it costs. Um, you know, hey, I, I, wa I would like to, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I would like to subscribe to the Uncanny X Men for $8 uh, for an entire, no, sorry, not even that. Uh, six dollars for a year's subscription to the uncanny x-men <laughs> oh three titles for sixteen dollars <laughs> um again i i know they're facsimiles but i'm sure they probably get some people who are not in the know hopefully they they don't get screwed look at that got the bullpen bulletins in there everything's the exact same but it's all on this nice magazine stock everything's full color perfect look at that I mean, this, you couldn't ask for anything more cool than this. I mean, this is like, this is a, a comic, a Gen X comic book buyer who started collecting comic books in the 80s. This is their holy grail. I, well, I'm not going to say it's their certain type of dream, but it's that too. But it, it is their holy grail. Um, it's perfect. What else, what else, what else can I say? I mean, outside of. The, it keeps me begging the question, are they going to make more? How many have they made? Is there a master list? I want to know all these these answers. Oddly enough, there is no real master list online. Um, so you kind of have to just look for them or go to the comic book shops and look for them. Like I said, I, I, I had to pick I, I had to pick this up because I've never, I've never they don't have a, an omnibus for this. You can't get this in this good of quality. Uh, the ROM series, right? There's ROM number one. I never had ROM number one. Well, actually, yeah, I take it back. I did have ROM number one, but I got it like in the 90s. I didn't get it back in the 80s. Um, I had a lot of ROM comics, but I never had number one until like, yeah, probably like 90, 91. Um, but uh, yeah, there's ROM number one. Look at that. The Technic Lego ad on the back. I mean, you know, th this is one of those ones I also got pre- um, 94 or not not this this specific comic but i'm just saying as i collected rom before i started collecting marvel comics as did i collect the micronauts so there's micronauts number one now micronauts number one has had an has had a, a an omnibus and you know and some collected versions of them but only like the first six issues or so so if they keep going with this which i hope they do because like i said i couldn't open my wallet fast enough when i when i saw these I'm like, you know, I heard of facsimiles, but I didn't know exactly what they were. I thought they were just like, oh, they're reprints, you know, and I only saw like one or two of them. I didn't really 
follow them. Um, and of course, here I am coming in late to the game because they started like 2019-ish, like just just prior to the pandemic. Um, so here I am coming late to the game again and having to play catch up. But luckily, there's not a lot now, um, which also you know I would like them to come out not faster because that is actually good it's for as far as my wallet goes. It's good that they only come out. You know a few maybe a couple of them a month because that's all about all i want to spend on it um but you know as long as they keep putting them out i mean i mean look at this a secret wars box filled with you know perfect versions of these comic books yeah they're not the first printing yes they're not the original right i don't freaking care i don't want i'm not buying these to to put my son through college people fell for that once I don't think people are going to fall for that again. I want these because I had these, and these are much superior. This this essentially is the Masters of the Universe Origins. I had the Masters of the Universe, the He-Man figures, as a kid, right? They had their limitations, but they've, they've perfected them, and they've brought them out recently in the Origins. This is essentially the Masters of the Universe Origins. This is taking what's great, but... The newsprint kind of sucked, right? And they've perfected it. And there it is. Um, X-Men 129, first appearance of Kitty Pride and Emma Frost. I mean, come on. Uh, you know, I, I just sold this comic about six years ago. Um, I had the, you know, I had a first printing of it. And I bought it for like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, I think. And I sold it for like 45 or 50 on eBay. Um, you know, but it was, you know, I, when I sold them, like when, yeah, it's a cool comic, you know, but it's, it's, it's not that great because it's, you know, on newsprint, blah, blah. I know it's the original, but it's just like, I'd rather have the 45 bucks, right? Okay. Well, for three ninety nine, hell, uh, all day I'll buy a perfect version of that. You know, people want to say, well, it's not the perfect version. It's not the real comic. It's like, well, you know what? You go spend $45 on the real comic and have a bunch of newsprint. It looks like shit. I'm going to go for... Uh, perfect pages, perfect, you know, newsprint page. And now, you know, of course, and I've always complained. I said, you know, why don't they just go back to putting comic books on newsprint, you know, make them cheaper? Well, they're not going to do that. Um, and so they're going to, if they're going to keep doing the magazine stock for all comic books, that's fine. But it's just like, make comics I will actually want to buy, and I'll do that. That's what these are, comic books I want to buy. Look at that. There's an, you got the ad for the shirts for a Kiss shirt, Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders, Cheryl Teague, Suzanne Summers. Who else is on there? Uh, there's probably a Farrah Fawcett one. Look at that. Speaking of ROM, the ad to the ROM. Now, one thing with all this craziness, them redoing all these old toys, um, is, oh, God, you know, will they ever... Redo and I don't want to. I don't want a, a a Hot Toys ROM for three hundred dollars. I don't want some ROM that's you know fully articulated. I want a one to one translation or copy of the Parker Brothers electronic ROM in the box, perfect new that works. That's what I want because I had them. I had them twice actually. I got them once in a garage sale. Um, not a garage sale, a rummage sale. They used to have uh, rummage sales at the, at the Congregational Church. And uh, we used to go there, and it was still fairly new. I mean, he came out in, what, probably the 78, 79? Rom came out. It was 79. I think I went to the sale in, like, late 79 or early 1980, and somebody was selling a Rom there. He, he had his parts, but he was did it in his box, and he worked. And I, and I remember the lady saying, oh, well, you know, that ROM figure, you know, that ROM doll, doll. It's not a doll, it's an action figure. Anyways, you know, and it was like a dollar or a dollar fifty. You know, it probably was like eight bucks at the store. Um, doesn't have a price on here on it. But anyways, yeah, so, oh, yeah, what I'm saying, it's 1979. They're advertising it in 1979. So that's pretty much when it came out. God, I'd love to have a ROM to go with these comics and, and just to have in my collection. Oh, God, I'd love to have one. But, I mean, and oh, I mean, let me hit pause for a second because i got to go get something just because I tell you, I'm, I'm all whooped up. 
my yep. Okay. So, anyways, I know I I know I showed these before, but I'm, they're they're pertinent to this ad. So there you go. 1979. This is when the 79 in the series with came out with Greedo and Hammerhead. But there you go. Original Star Wars figures. Speaking of having the original ROM, you've seen these before. I just put them back in their main boxes. There you go. Wow. There's the original 12 right there. Uh, I still have them all in their mint on card inside. These are all the retro reproductions. Again, I keep, you know, they're all in there. So, I, do I want the old, the original ones? No. I'll take these. Any, you know, this was, what, $65 for six figures? You know, a little over 10 bucks a piece. I think this one they raised it to like 70 so they were a little bit like $12 a piece just to finish off the original 12 But there they are. I have them for the collection. Uh, you know. So give me a ROM too. Give me a ROM and some Micronauts. I want that too. Um, so yeah, so when you see these ads and stuff, it's just like, oh, God. Love them. Love them. Um, but yeah, oh, there's yeah. I love that. I always love that. That drawing of Rom too. There's Stretch Armstrong. I don't think they make Stretch. I don't think they have a Stretch Hulk or Stretch Spider-Man. But they do make Stretch Armstrongs right now. Um, yeah, the model kits, and they do make. They did. They did redo the model kits, and I was tempted to jump on them. Um, I'm not gonna. I wouldn't want to get them all, but I definitely would want like um, the Darth Vader tie. Um, maybe the X-wing. You know, probably the X-Wing, the Darth Vader tie. Now, I got those little Galaxy, Squadron Galaxy versions of them. Which is essentially, you know, the the, the old little ones. But they're better. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't mind getting the models at some point. They'll probably end up becoming crazy expensive. I won't be able to find them anymore. But um, if I say jump on them all, these. Oh, I love these. Like little corgi stuff. I I don't know how many Batmobiles I had. I probably had at least fifty Batmobiles. I kept losing them, losing them. We go on vacation, losing them in people's cars, losing them in people's sandboxes, and they were like ninety nine cents every time we get the store. Dad got. He's like, didn't I just buy a, a Batmobile? It's like, yeah, but I lost it. Well, don't lose this one. Then I lose that one. And then the Batcopter, the Super Machine, Wonder Woman's, whatever that was. Actually, no, that was the Flash. Wonder Woman's convertible and the Flash's crazy car, the Joker's ambulance. Uh, I don't believe... I Actually, I did have the Penguin's car. Um, I had the... I think I had the Superman van. I don't think I had the Daily Bugle truck or the helicopter. I had almost all of these. Like I said, I had multiple. I had multiple Batcopters, too. I never had the the, the Corgi uh, Batcycle, though. Never had that one. But yeah, I mean, I think you can get these now, still. I think they have reproductions of those, but like I said, I reproduce my entire childhood. You know, if you could reproduce everything, uh, I, you know, I would. This is this is what I when it comes to collecting things, and when it comes to really getting exciting about you know opening your wallet and buying shit. This is the stuff that gets me excited. This is the stuff that gets me excited. It's stuff that I had that I. They're long gone that I wish I would have. I wish I still had, but now I have it again. Now, technically, this wasn't super long gone, this particular issue, but um, I, I didn't find... He didn't have the, the first part of Days of Future Past, but I got the second part of Days of Future Past. It's one I'm going to have to order or try to find in another comic book shop. Um, I looked over, and here it is. Here it is. Boom. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. It literally is 40 years ago. And maybe not to the date, obviously, because I don't think it was the early part of January when I first got this from Troy Stamp and Coin, but it was 40 years ago. 40 freaking years ago when I went in there. Remember, that I told the story a couple of times in some of the other videos where I went in and got the uh, limited, the Wolverine limited series. Um, I even did my Wolverine, yeah, that's right, I did my Wolverine limited series uh, video with the, with the trade paperback. There it is. Look at that. With the original. with <laughs> Now I had already seen... I, I got this late. I mean, this came out in, what, 81 or 82? And so I got it late. That's why I had to get it at Troy Stamp and Coin. Because it was a back issue. Only by a couple of years. 
But so I had already seen Megaforce in the theater. I loved Megaforce as a kid. I know it's a terrible movie, but I love it. I love Megaforce. I didn't realize that was uh, what's his face, Brad from uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show, <laughs> until until I became an adult. But man. I mean, those bikes and that crazy whatever the heck that van thing was and those buggies. Oh, you were pushing all my buttons as a kid. Um, I got a smell. Oh. But there it is. There it is. I mean, sure, I got the graphic novel sitting right there. You know, the collected graphic novel, but it doesn't have the Dungeons and Dragons advertisements inside of it. No, it does not, sir. Um... I know what the comic looks like. I'm just looking for the ad. There's a bubble yum ad. Uh, there you go, Mile High again. You know, the subscription pages. If you want to learn Kung Fu, or you want, to, want an Atlas body in seven days, there's the ads for it. Um, some of these other ones are weird. Poems wanted for music, musical settings and recordings by America's largest song studio. Song studio. Send poems... Free examination, five star, one of the, uh, the what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, oh my goodness. Like I said, this, this is what gets me excited. This is what gets me immensely excited. You know, look at that. Is that that apocalypse now? Yeah. Oh and, oh, and then this ad for the uh, MPC military aircraft models. Oh, <laughs> oh there was it. Prizes in cash. There we go. I remember I wanted to get... Uh, I didn't really want the BMX bike because it was a Huffy. Uh, but I did want the... Um, I wanted the model Tomcat. I wanted the SD's model rocket set, which I ended up just getting. I wanted the racetrack. Um, didn't want the curling iron. Didn't need the metal detector or the hiking backpack, did want the electronic football game. And they even had the Coleco, speaking of Coleco, there's the Coleco Pac-Man game. How many, what do you have to sell? You have to sell 50 items. It's like stationary packs or whatever it was. They're like, I think they were like five or six dollar items that you had to sell. You know, and obviously what do you do? You go, sell, you try to sell them to all of your neighbors and all of your family members and your friends, parents and everybody, you know, and hope you can get enough to uh, to get whatever you want here when your dad's just like well, what are you wasting your time for why don't I just go buy you that oh okay <laughs> he's like really you're gonna sit there and go door to door to sell a bunch of stationery to get you know enough money to or enough to buy a SD's model rocket kit I'll just go buy an SD's model rocket kit all right dad <laughs> thanks for uh, teaching me how to work for stuff but anyways <laughs> you know it's just how it was back then, I guess. Um, a turntable with speakers. A bow set. A, a recurve bow set. A fishing set. A fishing outfit, sorry. Oh, what do you uh, 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 Remote control cars. I was, they're probably the clicker type. But anyways, a football, a raft, a basketball. The, uh, a computer answer game, whatever that was. Anyway, sorry. Uh, but there it is. There it is, folks. Got it. I'm hoping they do the other three issues so I have the whole thing. That would be nice. Ah, don't kill it. That would be that would be nice. And, you know, with, with these, I mean, I don't really care. I mean, I'd love to have, yeah, I'd love to fill up that whole box with tons of these, you know, and get, I'd love to have runs and everything. But, you know, I don't know if they're really going to do all that. I, they, uh, I'll get to this. I'll get to the Secret Wars in a minute, but... Some of these, you know, they're probably just doing key issues. Obviously, key issue, key issue, key issue, you know. Um, the only DC one I, I... There's that Daredevil one. The only DC comic I got, because they do DCs too, um, is I got New Teen Titans number one. Uh, I wanted the first appearance of Batgirl in Detective Comics, which is available, but I didn't have that one there. Got that Daisy BB gun on the back. Um, but the thing that's weird with um, with DC is now DC is printing them on essentially that's Hudson paper or something or something close to it. Uh, uh, so it's got more of a tooth to it. It's a, it's not magazine stack. It's I think it's it's the equivalent of like Hudson paper. What they used to print 
you know, print their premium format books like Sensational She-Hawk or Excalibur. I used to print them on the Hudson paper, and um, this is pretty close to it. But the 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 uh, color is so much better because it's obviously it's, it's the printing systems are different now. Um, but yeah, there is there's George Perez's uh, his Teen Titans. I did a uh, I I'll show you here as well. I did I did make a place an order online because I've been looking around. <laughs> like I said, well, Saturday morning lineup. Um, I've been looking around online to see uh, what uh, what comics are available, and I still piecing together like a master list. But essentially, um, you can get most of them on eBay or on some of these various spots. I went with Golden Apple Comics because a lot of these places are actually sold out of a few issues, and I was like, huh. And so I'm, I wanted to. It's like I want to order like ten of them. I don't want to order one at a like. One for four dollars, and then pay four dollars in shipping on eBay. You know, some there's a couple of them available on Amazon, but I'm not going to pay the three ninety nine for every issue. It's just, I'm paying twice as much for the issue. I was trying to find a place that had like ten of them, and then I'll pay like six bucks or six ninety nine for shipping. Um, so it's, it makes sense. And if a Golden Apple had them all at cover price plus six ninety nine, you know, uh, up to hundred dollars, you get six ninety nine. For, uh, shipping, so I ordered 10, co 10 comics, you know, at $3.99, $4.99, um, so around 50 bucks to get, uh, a little less than $50 to get 10 comics, and then 50 with the shipping, I was, like, my bill came out like 45 something or whatever, and get 10 more of these, so I've got the Wonder, the George Perez 1987, yeah, uh, Earth 2, uh, Wonder, volume, basically volume 2 of Wonder Woman, I got that one, that's one of their DC one I, I'd like to have. So I got that one coming. And then I found, um, like, uh, Giant Size X-Men number one, uh, uh, Spider-Man number 300, the Todd McFarlane 300. I mean, try to get that one for a decent price. And let alone not just get it, but it's going to be the it's gonna be newsprint, you know. And this one's going to be the superior one. I, I would, I, I don't know which one I like better. This one's shinier. I like, I think I like the Hudson paper. The feel of it better because it seems more comic booky. This seems more um, like modern comic, uh, but I'm not going to complain. I mean, still, I mean, it's it's awesome. So I'll take it. So I got these. I think I got seven comics. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I have seven seven comics now to go into my box. And there we go. And put them all in here. As you can see, I got a huge grin on my face. I'm very happy. Um, I, you know, that's the thing. I've been I've been not buying a lot of stuff lately. I've been kind of holding off on buying crap uh, just because you know money situations and stuff. But you know, something comes along that just like I can't pass that up. I got I gotta have that. You know. And again, this is right. We're coming on the 40th anniversary of Secret Wars, which is the 40th anniversary of when I started collecting comics. So I mean, that's. This is basically my 40 year, you know, think about it, 40 years ago, I'm 50 now, so I was uh, 10 at the time, I know I was 11, I don't know, 84, I turned 50 and 80, yeah, 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 yeah that's right, so I'll be 51 this year, um, but I'm saying the year itself, uh, 84, it's been 40 years since I started collecting comics, actually I think my... I think I did go up there with my friend to get those comics at, Fire, at Rochester Book Center for the first time and learned about the whole, how the thing, everything worked. I think that was um, before my birthday, so I think I was still 10 at the time. Um, but yeah, so, like I said, I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about these two. I, I, yeah. I, I wanted the original 12. I got the original 12. I, you know, I got all the bounty hunters. I, I kind of talked about those already. But, uh, you know, I have a new set that came out. There's only like a couple of figures out of it I wanted, so I think I'm going to wait on that stuff um, and see what they're going to do, see what's going to happen with those, if they're going to make any more of those. I mean, sure, it'd be great to get every single one of my Star Wars figures again, too. Uh, but that's the thing. I mean, you know... Yeah, I, 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 and I was telling the guy at the comic book shop, and I said, you know, 
I said, why don't they... I said, if they were smart, Marvel and DC, you know, they want to keep selling comics, you know, and they want to keep in business. And here's the thing. They've got how many years of comic books they could reprint like that, do facsimiles of them? How many years of them? How many comic books? And here's the thing. You already own them. And you've already had them written, it drawn, you know, colored, inked, lettered. All the work's done, right? So you don't need to pay anything except for just printing them and, and distributing them. That's all you have to do. I mean, sure, you have to pay somebody probably to piece it together and do, you know, the assembling of the, you know, the, the construction of the comic. But, I mean, you have to do that with anything anyways. So... You know, but the big cost, you know, paying George Perez, who you can't pay him anymore because he's passed away, you know, by John Byrne, uh, Mike Zeck, you know, all these guys, you can't pay them, you know, you'd pay astronomical money to, to get a, you know, an old school artist to, uh, to do what? Do a new book? We don't want a new book. I don't want it. I want the old book. I want the original book. Um, so, yeah, so I've got that. So that's definitely going to be something I'm going to be keeping my eyes on. And so let me just switch over real quick here to see you can see. I know I'm, I don't want to go too long on this one. Like I said, I don't want to go past the point of uh, people not paying attention anymore. But uh, this is on Marvel.com. Uh, and they say right here, Marvel Superheroes Secret Wars Facsimile Edition celebrate the 40th anniversary of the original Marvel crossover event. Starting in January, now, each issue, next Wednesday is when the first one comes out, each issue of the 12 limited series and an entire year of Amazing Spider-Man, starting with issue 252, will be re-presented in its original form. I'm on board. I'm collecting every issue. I'm getting the entire year run of Spider-Man, Spider getting all of the uh, Secret Wars they're all going in the box. That's, I mean, that's a given. I'm going to, you know, hell or high water, I'm going to get them all. That's what the 2024, that's what my, my, uh, that's what I'm searching for this year. Um, and it just kind of goes on to, you know, shows there's the cover of it. So, like I said, that's what's, that's what kicked it off for me. And of course, obviously, as you know, in Secret Wars, I mean, spoiler alert. 40-year-old spoiler, spoiler alert. Um, Spider-Man gets the black costume, the symbiote. And uh, and then, of course, here's t issue 252 in May. So, you know, technically, hopefully they do an entire year. If they start with 252 in January and then do one 12 issues, hopefully they'll go into, you know, they'll do what? 252, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 60... 61, 62, 63, so 263, and if they sell, hopefully they keep going, because if they keep going, I'm going to keep going uh, and get all of those issues, so I'm definitely getting those. I mean, that's the thing, I mean, when when uh, I first started collecting comics, when I first learned about Wolverine, obviously, we just talked about that, um, but, uh, you know, the other com the other thing was when I saw Spider-Man in this black costume that blew me away. Blew me away. I'm like, what is that? So, obviously, Spider-Man, black Spider-Man costume was my second favorite thing. You know, maybe maybe it overshadowed Wolverine once in a while, but for the most part, that was, I mean, I was in. I was hooked. Comic books were going to be a way of life for me. And, uh, you know, and the, the, the thing that's weird, though, is... Um, you know, I mean, comics, comic books at the time, I think were 65 cents or 75 cents. I think they're 65 cents. You know, and like I said, I could get enough pop bottles. So get, a jump, get a bunch of pop bottles together and I'd get like five bucks or four or five bucks in my pocket. And I would just go up to, and I would just like, look, it's just like, it was just like now. It's like, as soon as I see an issue that's one of these facsimiles, I'm buying it if it's one of the ones I want. And the thing, same thing with back then, and that's how this all started. Was I was go, I was going to bookstores. I went, you know, we didn't really have a comic book shop per se back then. I mean, Troy Stamp and Coin was the closest thing we had. I didn't know that Dave's Comics existed in Royal Oak because I didn't go to Royal Oak that often. Um, but 
you know, and Comics Corner didn't open up yet where I bought those. Um, so, yeah, so every time I went into, like, a drugstore and saw a spinner rack or went into a bookstore and saw a spinner rack and they had an issue of Amazing Spider-Man or an X-Men comic, you know, I was like, boom, grabbed it, you know. Boom, grabbed it, and then I realized, oh, I've got almost a run here. I'm missing a couple of holes in it. And then, of course, I discovered the American Legion Hall uh, comic book, the Extravacon, which, oh, I would love it. I, you know, I'd love to, I would love that, that this just becomes a huge thing, and they reprint all of this stuff, and then they start having Legion Hall con conventions where they're all just selling just reprints uh, facsimiles of the original spider-man and you walk in and you got that smell of old cigarette you know cigarette smell cigar smell stale beer you know and musty halls you know mixed with body odor and cheeseburgers you know all of that together a cacophony of smells you walk in just like i was talking about my record store where i did go to the legion hall and i did have that experience um but with these i mean obviously you know they're gonna sell, they're gonna sell originals and stuff like that. But I mean, you know, I'm just in a perfect world in my dream fantasy world. <laughs> I would love to do that. Since it was the Legion Hall right around the block, to walk there, uh, go once a month. Oh yeah, pick up all the ones I'm missing. Sorry, I mean that's that's super exciting to me. As you can see, I'm pretty happy about that. You know, before Christmas everything sucked, and this last week really sucked. Believe me. Uh, so, you know, I needed some, I needed a, a pick-me-up. I needed something to really get me to, you know, charge my batteries, you know. So, I'm going to keep getting them. I'm buying all the Secret Wars, buying all the Spider-Mans uh, for the year. I'm hoping they do. X-Men would be nice. The only, I, I know why they're doing this is because this is Secret Wars, 40th anniversary, and, of course, they're doing the, uh, you know, the Spider-Man of the black cast and to coincide with it so that's cool but you know a lot of other stuff came out in 84 too i'm just trying to think some of the other you know big comics or whatever but regardless i mean it would be nice if they printed up a bunch of uh i mean they got some x-men obviously got those but if they did a nice run of x-men like a whole year run of x-men would be great starting at like i don't know starting an issue in 84 or maybe maybe they'll maybe in 85 they'll do it maybe there's going to be a 40 year anniversary in 85 um but yeah so i would highly suggest if you like these to go out and buy these um if you've got any information uh good place to get them you know uh i when i i rolled back into town and i uh, i tried to hit the comic book shop here in town and uh, they're not open on sunday i i kind of figured they were but i drove by because i was on the way home and I was like, no, they're not open. But I'm, I'm hoping that he's got some in there. And that's probably if I, where I'm going to be buying them, if I'm buying them off the shelf, is uh, at that comic book shop. And so I kind of want to see if he can like give me a box or something. I don't have a box there, but maybe if he can give me a box and a pull list. And uh, and it's like, hey, just pull every single Secret Wars facsimile and pull every Spider-Man facsimile. Pull, pull every X-Men facsimile. You know, I'll buy them all. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I'm pretty excited about it. Um, like I said, again, if you got any information, you got a, a tip where to find some good ones, maybe find them on the cheap. You know, maybe somebody who's got, I'm, I need the, they have a She-Hulk, Savage She-Hulk number one. They got a Spider-Woman number one. I'm looking for those two. I still need the first part of uh, Days of Future Past. Um, there's the first appearance of um, Batgirl in Detective Comics. There's another Batman or Detective Comics with Alan the um, Alan Davis ones. I think they have facsimiles of those. Like I said, I've seen, not a master list, but I've seen a lot of them now to see what's available. And uh, there's, a, oh, there's the, the Death of Gwen Stacy, the two-parter. I Did I wait? No, I ordered that. Oh, that's right. Let me, let's, let's, I actually don't want to pull up my uh, email here. But anyways, uh, Golden Apple Comics. I think it's called Golden Apple Comics. I think I, I bookmarked them here. Let me go here let's go to my bookmarks let's go to where's my regular bookmarks oh, 
Did everything change while I was gone? What the heck's going on here? Let's just go Golden Apple Comics. Go Golden Apple Comics. Uh, here we go. Golden Apple Comics. So this is where I bought uh, the facsimiles. So, um... Let's just see what they got. Fac, sim, facts a smile, or however you pronounce that. Um, they got a service. I'd like to have the service. So they've got like a, obviously going to do like Avengers number one, Iron Man number one. These are all still available too. You know the first appearance of Wolverine, which I should pick up with Hulk. Um, you know giant size. With, you know they got some of the Batman ones like the year one. Um, looks like they're doing all of year one for Batman. Uh, you got, you know, old issue, uh, number four of X-Men. Uh, there's the ROM. There's the Gwen Stacy. So I, I got this one. I ordered this one. This through Amazing Spider-Man 300. Now, they do have foil versions of these. They're like seven bucks. I, I don't care for the foil ones. I don't want stupid shit. I just want their comic books. I don't want foil crap. So I'm not really... And those are obviously more sought after, and that's collectors. But I'm not buying these to be... I'm, I'm collecting them because I love them. I'm not collecting them to to make money. Um, you know, X Men number one. You know, there's the other uh, Gwen Stacy, Death of Gwen Stacy. I ordered that. Let's see. So I ordered one, two, three. I ordered Giant Size X Men four. Oh, there's Batman number one. Um, this one's not out yet, obviously. I was going to get Werewolf by Night. Uh, they didn't, yeah, they didn't have the first part of this. I didn't grab Amazing Spider-Man 1 either. I did grab, um... Which other ones did I grab? I got, yeah, there's Wonder I grabbed the, the George Perez Wonder Woman number one. Um, and I grabbed, uh... That's a good comic. But yeah, you can see they're going to come out with them all. Here's the Secret Wars ones. Uh, I think that's all I grabbed. I, I grabbed 10 comics. So whatever 10 comics I grabbed, I can't find them all. I can't remember what, everything I ordered. Um, I said Detective Comics with Batgirl. So, sorry. Um, so, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to end the video here. It's, uh, it's coming up on uh, 45 minutes. So, and I'll post this one tomorrow, well, uh, tomorrow's Monday, uh, and we'll get that one, we'll get it out. So, I ordered 10, I can't remember what else I ordered. I'm just counting, them. maybe I did get that one, maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, six. Oh, you were. Oh, oh, seven. Yeah, I got this one seven. Sorry, I just didn't click on this one seven. I did order the She Hulk eight, so I got the She Hulk. I still need Spider Woman. I think they have a Dazzler too. I want the Dazzler. No Miss Marvel yet though. Um, and did I get this? That one's not out yet. That's two fifty four. Oh, where's two fifty three? Um, I might have got this one, Jim Lee one. Where did I get that? No, that's 253 there. Okay. So, yeah, th those will be out. I'll get those eventually. I ordered 10. Whatever 10 I ordered, I ordered. Um, so those will come. And this isn't all of them. This is a lot of them I'm showing you here. Like I said, there's no... They don't show... Oh, there's a Sandman number one. Um, it's like I said, most of the key issues are in are reprinted. But uh, but yeah, but I mean, have a box. You know what this? You know what this reminds me of? Is remember back in the Sears catalog or the J.C. Penney's catalog? You'd go, you know, you look up where I want to find my G.I. Joe, and my Transformers figures, right? But then you'd get to like the the back of the where sh they you like you know here's some Dungeons and Dragons books, here's um some hobbies, some coin collecting, right? And you'd see a page and say, get into the hobby of collecting comic books, and they'd give you a short box. It didn't have a cool print on it, but they give you a short box. They give you like 50 comics, and they're all reprints of just uh, various comics, sort of of that time period. So, like, say if you bought them in '85, you'd probably get like '83 to '85 
reprints. You know, some G.I. Joe. I think there was DC and Marvel together mixed in there. Um, so you get just a bunch of them. And again, I mean, who cares if they're reprints, you know? It was it kind of kickstart your, your comic book collection. You read them, um, throw them in the box, throw some bags on them, and collect them. I mean, that, I think it came with a pack. I think you got a bag of 100 bag. You got like 50 cap. All right. Maybe they give you 100 comics. It wasn't a lot of money. It was like twenty five dollars for that kit. That's what this kind. Of, sorry, that's what this kind of reminds me of. Was that kit, but a lot cooler and a lot more fancy, you know. But anyways, I'll let you. I'll let you guys uh, scoot on today. But anyways, um, I keep saying. But anyways, so uh, yeah, I'll get back to doing my comic book series. I gotta do the episode on script writing. I kind of took some notes and stuff over the last week and kind of collected my thoughts on script writing. I had to write some scripts myself for my own comics. So I was kind of like, you know, kind of, you know, writing up some notes as I go to something, stuff that I want to talk about for me writing scripts. But um, I'll get to that series. Uh, somebody did request, they wanted me to do a demo of the Leo James Les Paul. So uh, I do have the, and I haven't done my, my demo of the Orange Amplifier. So I'll probably dig that out sometime and I'll put it here. So you can, I'll put the speaker, you know, the amplifier near the microphone here. I'm not going to do, I'm not, you know, that'll be my mic. I'll mic up the thing and I'll do a, uh, a demo of both so you can hear the orange amplifier, which sounds amazing. And you can hear the Leo James and maybe I'll even hook up the, uh, the, the Behringer Tube Screamer and you can hear the, that, how much that thing really rips. So I'm going to work on that video too as well. That one's coming down the pipeline. Um, I got to get back to work tomorrow and, you know, I got a lot of coloring to do, a lot of stuff to, to knock out for commissions and I got my own comic to do. So I've got a lot of work to start tomorrow morning. Um, I'll be bright up, up bright and early, you know, rock star in hand, guzzled <laughs> to give myself uh, some energy and I'm going to go right, right to it. And try to crank out as much as I can this week because I'm I'm a week I'm I'm not only a week behind because of Christmas I'm a week behind because I had to make an emergency trip out of town so it really put set me back set me back making the videos too so uh, I'm back uh, I've I'm you know I'll be working on all that stuff and crank it out and getting to you so you can see it but uh, again you know like subscribe comment on the stuff. If you're into this, you think it's stupid, you think it's you know a waste of money, you can give me all your thoughts, I'd like to know. Uh, you kind of know my thoughts. I mean, I'm pretty much, you know, I've, I've drank the Kool-Aid in this one, and I don't think there's anything anybody's going to tell me to, you know, <laughs> to stop. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on board, hook, line, sinker. I mean, this couldn't have happened at a better time. I needed a pick-me-up, and it's the 40th anniversary of when I started collecting comic books. So perfect timing. All right, I'll catch you guys on the next video. All right, bye-bye.